In observing materials that repel water, one refers to the hydrophobic effect. This is the tendency of nonpolar molecules to aggregate in aqueous solutions and repel water molecules. Today, we will observe hydrophobicity both as a natural phenomenon and explore its use in both present and future technologies. To begin, we'll look at a few examples of hydrophobicity in nature. Um, here we can see a feather which has clear indications of hydrophobicity based on its tendency to repel water. Um, this is something that you may have noticed at a very young age. Um, another thing that many people might notice is that many leaves found in rainforests, jungles, your regular forest will have a tendency to repel water. Um, based upon the water droplets and the large amounts of water that will fall off. Um, this picture clearly shows many water droplets and a clear indication of hydrophobicity. This effect, known as the lotus effect, is a example of superhydrophobicity, which we'll address later, but it is called that because water just falls off. All right. So, first we're going to talk about hydrogen bonds. Hydrophobicity is mostly caused by a disruption of the hydrogen bonds in water. When hydrocarbon chains or another similar nonpolar molecule enters uh, the water, the molecules of the water, the H2O, they reorganize themselves to minimize contact with the alien molecule that has been introduced into the water. This causes the water to form a sort of shell, a cage around the molecule. Uh, the technical term for this is a solvation shell. And this basically makes the molecule separate from the water, similar to oil floating on an ocean surface. It's on top of the water, doesn't mix with the water at all. The creation of this shell generally causes some restriction in the movement of the water molecules that actually make up the shell. Um, obviously, as you might expect, the specific amount of restriction depends on the size of the molecule being shelled in. Bigger molecules that are being enclosed um, result in more restriction. Hydrophobic force is just the force that water exerts to move the hydrophobic molecules together. Um, this happens during the cage forming process in order to reduce the amount of surface area where the water is in contact with the hydrophobic molecules. If all the hydrophobic materials are in one place, the water will have less contact with them, which is what the cage forming process is all about. Hydrophobic force is also the primary force behind protein folding. Hydrophobicity is pretty related to solubility in that a soluble molecule is not hydrophobic and non-soluble molecules are hydrophobic. Now that we understand the basic nature of hydrophobicity and how it works, you can kind of start to get an idea of what superhydrophobicity is. By its name, you can guess that it's merely just a powerful form of hydrophobicity, as seen here where liquids just repel and quite literally fall off objects with a superhydrophobic coating. In this instance, a finger which is coated, partly coated in this, superhydrophobic coating stays quite dry. Um, you can see also here that the contact angle for superhydrophobic coating is quite um, high, which allows the water to fall off. In this video, some sand is coated in superhydrophobic coating, and once the, the spoon comes out of the water, you can see clearly that the sand has made no contact with the water. Another example here of sand in a cup where the water literally bounces off the sand and shoots back into the tank. One more interesting thing about hydrophobicity is the way in which it relates to entropy. An equation that relates the entropy of a reaction to its enthalpy, or total energy, and the free energy in the reaction is delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, as you see here where delta G is the free energy, delta H is the change in enthalpy, T is the temperature, and delta S is the change in entropy. When you mix a hydrophobic material, such as oil or another hydrocarbon with water, it doesn't happen instantaneously. 
as opposed to when you drop a bit of salt in water when it does. This non-spontaneity means that delta G is positive. Also, this mixing happens to be slightly exothermic, so delta H is negative. Using both of these inequalities and our equation, we can deduce that delta S is then significantly less than zero. Because entropy is a measure of the disorder of a system, a negative entropy means that the system is more ordered. While you might think that mixing the two liquids would make them less ordered because they're more jumbled up, in fact it is more ordered because the solvation shells that the water forms around the hydrocarbons give the water more rigidity and there is less ability for the molecules to be wherever. When the hydrophobic force pushes all the hydrocarbons back together, there is a decrease in order, as the molecules now have more freedom to be wherever they want, instead of locked into the shells. This is represented by an increase in entropy. So, one practical application for hydrophobic materials is this waterproof memo pad notebook thing you see here. Obviously, regular paper, when it gets wet, you can't write on it, your notes kind of get all smudged, and you can't really read what you wrote, and you lose your stuff. Um, that's a big issue for people who are working out in the environment, like biologists or loggers or military personnel, because um, if they need to write something down about what they see, what they hear, whatever, and it gets wet, it rains, they have to go through some sort of wet environment for whatever reason and they lose all their notes. Um, with this technology, this hydrophobic technology, it keeps the notes intact and as you can see even when the water gets wet and is smudged around the notes stay where they are. Similar to the waterproof notebook, as you can see here the water just rolls right off this rain jacket I'm wearing. Uh, keeping me dry and protected, just like those notes. Another practical application for hydrophobicity is this fancy thing called Liquipel. What happens is, when you use it on like a piece of technology like a, like a cell phone, you put it in a chamber and suck out all the air so it's almost a vacuum, uh, coat it with the special solution, and it gets into all the tiny cracks and crevices and everywhere in this cell phone and after that you take it out and it is waterproof because there's a very small thin layer around all of the parts even to the little tiniest piece on the inside of where you plug the charger in that repel water so that if you drop it in the toilet while you're texting while you're peeing um, you can just pull it right out and it's not ruined it's not damaged you do have to wait for it to dry if you want to charge it right away but Hopefully that's not the first thing you think of when you drop your phone in the toilet while you're peeing. So, we have seen many examples of substances which are hydrophobic, but there is also the reverse effect, which is hydrophilicity, where something loves water. In this case, the, the water spreads out across the surface so as to maximize the surface area in contact as opposed to hydrophobicity, where it tries to minimize the surface area in contact. You can see this clearly in the example of the stainless steel countertop, and also here with the cup.